You gonna shoot Wild Bill? I just gotta get the time right in my head. If you gonna finish, Bill, you ought to just get to it. I killed two men in my life. I never made no goddamn circus out of it. I didn't know no ladies killed. I was defending myself against unnatural advances. Well, Bard, looks like you've come to a messy end. No size to it. it. Don't seem right for the great wild Bill, but don't look like nothing can be done. I've been proud to know you, Bill. So I figured, Jack, since all this makes no difference to Bill, kill him quick, kill him, and don't apologize. You're going to go to hell, Joe. It would be a kindness to have your company, but I'm just trying to get it over with. Don't hold her against me, Bill. Kill him. Somebody who thinks he's as tough as a nickel steak. But they all come to speed for the do re me. Now get this. We ain't partners. We ain't brothers and we ain't friends. My little brother was 15 years old. You think about that. You're way up How about cutting the heat? Oh, I get it. You want some kind of contest, huh? You're real smart boys. I guess maybe you'll have to kill me. Well, it looks like I finally ran into someone that likes to play as rough as I do. Yeah, this must be a lucky night. Well, my bodies, they're not nice like me. Are we supposed to say thanks? You're not supposed to say nothing, soldier. accepted your challenge. He's gone to some trouble to make things even. Now, if you got any sense left, you just head on home. You, sir, will die. This town, I really think it's like something out of the Bible. And what part of the Bible? The part right before God gets angry. Men wanted to be him. You best hand over the gun, Phil. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to step over there and slap you around some. Women wanted to love him. I love you, Bill. Right now, I love you too, Jane. And outlaws wanted to be the one to kill the legend. An awful lot of people want a piece of wild Bill. Wild Bill, I come here to kill you. Me to show some color. Don't do it, Bill! Jeff Bridges. I don't explain myself. Not to you, not to nobody. Ellen Barkin. Man that kills Wild Bill is gonna be awful famous. John Hurt, Diane Lane, Keith Carradine, Christina Applegate, Bruce Dern, and David Arquette. You said that you were a horse molester. You say war horse? In a film by Walter Hill. Be seeing you around, Wild Bill. Wild Bill. Take a walk on the wild side. Hello, folks. Welcome back to Last Call of Torchies. I am one of your hosts, Gary Hill. With me tonight, as usual, was Lee Russell. Uh, hello. We're going to talk some Acid Western and other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Also with us tonight from the... Well, yeah, he, he does many, many things, much like Lee. Um, our friend and confidant and um, riding partner, if you will, um, <laughs> Mr. Cameron Scott. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, and I ain't apologizing for shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, but not likely. Maybe, maybe, yeah. We're talking tonight uh, about Wild Bill from 1995. It's just about, just what you think it is. It's about the legendary lawman Wild Bill Hickok um, towards the end of his life. 
And um, <clears throat> there's a cheap plot synopsis, too. With the early, early career of legendary lawman Wild Bill Hickok is telescoped and it culminates in the relocation in Denwood, De De Denwood, Deadwood, and a re reunion with Calamity Chain. Um, this is written um, from, from two books, the script by Walter Hill and directed by Walter Hill. Your long, long cast includes Jeff Bridges as Wild Bill Hickok, Ellen Barkin as Calamity Jane, uh, John Hurt as Charlie Prince, Diane Lane as uh, Susanna Moore in, in flashbacks only. So she's back again, which is great. Mm. Uh, Keith Carradine back again as Buff Buffalo Bill Cody. Uh, banner roll from David Arquette as, as Jack McCall. We'll talk about that. Uh, Christine Applegate as Lurleen Newcomb, uh, his, the voice in his ear to tell him to do shit. You get about two minutes of Bruce Dern in this movie, and it's a wonderful two minutes, uh, as Will Plummer. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, new addition to the Walter Hill universe, but I wish she was here forever, playing everything. James Gammon as California mm -hmm. Joe. Um... This guy ain't bad either. Mar Marjorie Gortner has Preacher with his uh, delicious curly locks still still in play. And uh, I think that's still the last thing he's done, right? Could be. Yeah, I think so. It's pretty, pretty close, yeah. yeah. Uh, James Remar shows up as Donnie, Don, Don, Donnie Lonigan. And uh, another Walter Hill alum, uh, Stoney Jackson, uh, who showed up in Trespass and Streets of Fire. And that might be about it, but still, he shows up in this movie as... Um, J Jubai Pickett, our, our, our only African-American cowboy in this movie, and he plays it pretty good. So we'll um, mm. get in this proper right now, and I'll ask uh, Cameron his initial thoughts on the movie. Uh, initial thoughts. I remember when I first saw this, I didn't understand the movie. I don't know what frame of mind I was in in 1995, but I was graduating high school, and maybe my mentality just wasn't uh, correct for a movie about old men dying in the old west I, I just don't know but i rediscovered the movie about 10 years later so it would have been about 2005 or so and i saw it at a screening up in chicago uh it was on a double feature wow, i kind of can't even remember what the double feature was but that doesn't matter what the other movie was because we're not here to talk about that and i instantly fell in love with the movie i don't know what frame of mind i was in that first time but it wasn't right i love jeff bridges in it uh, i love the style of it it's, it's grown on me over the years. I, I love how it switches back and forth from black and white to the color. I love the color scheming of it. And the cast. I mean, you've already you know went through the whole cast, but Jack Gammon, I mean, God damn, is he good in this. He, he's, he's the reason to show up, him and Ellen Barkin, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And, and Jeff Bridges is no slouch at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's he totally embodies Wild Bill Hickok. You would have believed he was Wild Bill Hickok. But it's uh, it's a shame that this movie didn't do better. It's a shame that it, it it's not held as in high regard. I think it's one of like the, the lesser known hits out of Walter Hills, you know, the, the ammunition in his uh, gun belt, so to speak. Uh, it, it does suffer from some third act slog, uh, I, I think is probably why some people probably don't get into it. It's a bit, it's a bit long in the tooth, much like with Wild Bill himself, it's a little bit long in the tooth, but I got mad love for this movie. I, I think this is one of the, the highlights of the Western genre, to be honest, and I'll leave it at that. Cool. Lee? Um, so I think the first time I saw this was sometime in the 90s on TV, like the late 90s, somewhere around there. And I didn't, I didn't hate it or anything. I, it was just kind of like, oh, it was a movie. I watched it. And then that was the last time I, I had seen it until watching it for, for the show. Um, oh damn! Yeah, and man, I uh, I definitely like it a lot more uh, this time around. Um, I kind of like it mostly for the fact that it really is like Walter Hill kind of like trying to step a little bit out of his regular sort of mode again, like with Geronimo. Although here he's doing a different thing than he's doing in Geronimo. He's he's taking more of a mythological take on the main character in wild bill here and you know peppering in the sad reality like the details surrounding the end of his life he's peppering that in a little bit but he's much more interested about sort of like painting a picture of the sort of um mythological aspects of uh, who wild bill was um 
I think the the film wanted to make a point about the reality of these famous figures versus what is commonly portrayed and accepted in in the general public and pop culture these days. Um, I don't know. I don't necessarily think he a hundred percent succeeds. Like I think he kind of loses his way a little bit. Like Cameron was saying, there is kind of a third act slog in this where I feel like he loses a bit of focus on, on what he's kind of trying to accomplish. But I, but I think he really is trying to like dig deep into the, you know, into the fact that like, wild bill was a very like there there's a lot of conflicting stories about him and how he sort of propped up his own sort of myth and like you know uh, gary saying how you know uh wild bill lawman like he was very rarely actually a lawman like he he was a couple of times but he was mostly just like a famous drifting cowboy who killed several people and kind of drifted around making you know making his fortune off his name kind of like whatever town he'd go to and shit. Um, And we, and then, you know, as we go into the movie, we learn he's kind of, he, he makes mistakes. He's he's a reckless person. Um, A lot of his life choices end up being really bad and end up burning him in the end, especially when it comes to his health. Um, And I'm sure we'll get into that as we talk about it, but um, yeah, it's interesting that like, I feel like this might be the movie that really killed Walter Hill is like a big time director too, because it was such a financial failure, but it's one of his most interesting films at the same time. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it as we talk more about it, but uh, yeah, I, I like it. Yeah. This is right there in the hitch of, you know, when the Westerns were starting to get big and, you know, probably, probably big thanks to Clint Eastwood and the Un- and, and Unforgiven when that came out that became a huge hit and mm-hmm. kickstarted this whole western genre thing again I think uh, Walter Hill kind of ran with that just to say I'll, I'll make these westerns that I've been interested in making my, my whole career and there's a, there's this window so you get this you get the, the Geronimo film we talked about the last show and I think I think Last Man Standing comes next I think in the, in the chrono- chronological order but um he gets yeah, kind of, someone standing. Yeah, yeah. He, he kind of gets to make these movies, these wild, these wild western movies that, uh, you know, the subject matter he's always been fond of, and this this shows pretty well because you got Jeff Bridges, you know, c- c- kind of playing what Jeff Bridges plays, this 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 easygoing dude who who happened to be this this killer lawman back in the day, he's just kind of like going through the motions in the way in a way where. He'll, he'll he'll jump up when he needs to to take care of business, but he's not interested in you know helping this one, helping he's that very, one. Yeah, he's very dis. Yeah, he, he's very disenchanted with his own image, right? Like he's he's presented as a guy who's just like he's done everything, and there's really nothing for him to do anymore. And now he's just kind of like, oh hey, it's Wild Bill. Everyone look, it's Wild Bill, and he's like very disenchanted with the whole thing. Um, and I will, and I will, yeah, and it's it's very much perfect casting because you know jeff bridges just sort of has that way about him where he he fits into like a hangout movie you know where he can just sit back and and play and like he does that here and also he he looks a lot like fucking wild bill like he he looks right right very like if you look at the actual photos of wild bill he he's pretty dead on casting like walter hill got super super lucky with the casting here on that and who can play curmudgeon you know, ailing old man better than Jeff Bridges? Yeah, again, the ailing old man, what, Wild Bill's, what, 39 when he died? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was old, that was old for, uh, yeah. you know, gunslingers back in the day. Yeah. And he, he, he plays that really well. I mean, it, it, you could say it's just a dude playing cowboy, and you would be all the way wrong. Because, you know, I'd say, I don't know how many years later, like eight years later, he would cut his hair and play Rooster Cogburn in that True Grit remake, you know, and um, he's pretty much playing the same part of that movie. This, and, in, hmm? this the, Yeah, this informs Rooster Cogburn way more than it does the dude. Like, anyone who's saying, like, he's playing the dude here doesn't fucking know what you're talking about. Like, he, <laughs> no, he's he, not the dude at all. No, this this is a, this is a you know, a, a drunken mess, a, a sick killer at the end of his life who you know, is like trying to live up, you know, he, he can't outrun his image, his famous image. That's that even he's disenchanted with. 
and he's really quick to anger as well. He's trying to live his life. He's trying to like, you know, I just want to go someplace and live a quiet life, kind of like get out of, from under this. And he, his image won't allow him to get out from under it. And people keep pushing him, and he is quick to like snap and and like shoot a motherfucker. A little too quick sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can tell, you know, like especially. And I, I need to rewatch the Altman movie about Buffalo Bill and his Wild West show. That, that's a thing that exists. Um, especially when he's mm-hmm. doing that, he's like, "Yeah, they're telling the story of the Great Wild Bill again. I'm fucking bored now. Can I fucking leave?" You know, because he he knows what his role is. He just at the same time he's like, "This is like the fucking fourth show today or something." He was thinking and like, "Yeah, I'm fucking go now." Yeah. <laughs> But you're right, though. He's a guy who's sick of his own image and, you know, sick of people. Who, of course, folks are constantly trying to fucking challenge him, including the great Bruce Dern, which they play that, that, that scene so well because you get to see everything of why <laughs> Bruce Dern is upset with him because he crippled him in a gunfight. And he just busts up in that wheelchair. Yep, motherfucker, I'm just as quick as you. And guess what? He's not, you know. And he, there goes old yeah, Bruce Dern. That, uh, that yeah. character could have... That character could have easily shown up in the Quick and the Dead as well. Like from around I was thinking this time. the same damn thing. Yeah, like that. That feels like a shootout that should be in the Quick and the Dead. I love when they bring like <laughs> when uh, Wild Bill has them bring him out in a chair just to make things even. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like oh, it's like he's already taking an offense to your your being there, so you're just going to rub salt in that wound. Like yeah, yeah, go for it, Bill. Yeah, that's all great, and I, I mentioned. How great James Gammon is in this movie! I, I don't, I don't, I don't discount that at all. He's, I love James Gammon, Gammon in most things, but this is being like his partner, being California Joe, just that guy to sit at the poker table mm-hmm. and just say, "Remember that one time back at blah 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 blah, and you, you did this, you shot that guy." You, you need this this shit talking partner, and he, he he plays that so well, you know, just to keep reminding of what he's done and remind, and at the same time reminding others not to fuck with him by telling them what he's done, you know. Yeah, he's he's the he's the Pancho Villa to fucking Wild Bill's Don Quixote. Like he's he's you know, he's the uh, the eternal sidekick basically. And you know, he he's both support and he's also a problem because everywhere he goes, he's talking about how great Wild Bill is and that just, you know, that attracts way too much attention from people in town, wherever the fuck Wild Bill shows up. Very yeah, rich. he's like a, the world's best wingman, but also like the world's worst wingman. He's like, mm-hmm. just, you know, Wild Bill should just lean down in and just I'm like, hey, shut the fuck up, would you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy you another shot if you just don't tell that story again. Yeah. Yeah, I also mentioned that, that this is probably one of the best David Arquette roles. I, mean, I love a lot of David Arquette roles as far as like him being like the funny guy, the goofy guy, but... This basically being the, the the greatest you know deadbeat dad story I guess in ever thrown in a western ever because he yeah. he comes to town because he thinks that he scorned his mother you find out later that's that's not the case and it is it, is he the baby daddy you, you, you don't know but he thinks he has some kind of connection to him so he's gonna you know be the guy that kills Wild Bill which you know spoilers he he, he does. Um, I'm not sure that's true in history. I had to go look back at that. I didn't really do he, much. He, he, does, he, he does, but he does, but like historically, um, his character was a Jack McCall, right? Um, he is, um, yeah, Jack McCall. Uh, so he was, he had actually no real relation to Wild Bill. Like he was just, he was just a drifting, like gambler, asshole, deadbeat kind of thing. Typical kind of guy that would be in a, saloon that wild bill would you know frequent um and i guess you know he crossed wild bill and wild bill rebuffed him or something like that at some point and that's kind of the reason he ended up doing the killing or whatever it had nothing to do with any sort of like relation or oh my mother knew you or whatever like one of the um one of the two sources that this film takes its uh inspiration from uh purported that as like a 
as a as a theory as to what was going on. I don't know if they were trying to purport it as actual truth or not. Like, you know, when when it comes to stuff like that coming out of the old west, it it's very shades of gray, like, nah, are you sure maybe? Is this historically accurate? What's the intentions of the narrative in this or whatever? But that was one of the like theories from one of those sources that, oh, he was actually Wild Bill's kid and you know, that turns it into more of like a Shakespearean tragedy almost in a, in a sense yeah. there's kind of that vein running through the film so I can see why you know I can see why uh, Walter Hill would be interested in including that into this just to make it a little bit more you know, a little bit a little bit a little bit sweeter you know uh, make things a little bit more interesting well it makes things a little bit more fantastical as a little mm-hmm. bit more uh, you know it seems like there's there was more effort put into it. Like uh, in another iteration of the story was in the Deadwood TV series, mm-hmm. the Deadwood HBO series, which Walter Hill also co-produced and directed. You know, when they have Wild Bill show up in Deadwood, it's just like it was more like it. I, I guess I'm using air quotes here that you can't see that the story versus mm-hmm. the reality of it, where Jack McCall was just a pretty much a vagabond that just wanted to have a drink with wild bill and like you said he kind of rebuffed them and was just like oh okay well i'm taking offense to this now i'm going to shoot you in the back and yeah and it's and i watched that episode in prep for this just because i want i want to see you know another another depiction of this and in the in the actual deadwood series it's so casual like you know there's a reason for it but it's it's presented as just so matter of fact and casual as compared to here where it's like there's this big build-up and like we can i can kind of associate it with um assassination of jesse james by the coward robert ford it's got that same sort of like thing going on to it where it's there's this like extended relationship between david arquette's character and jeff ridge's character you know where you know it, the story is told throughout the entire film instead of it just being like a little pinprick in history you know just a little moment which is the actual reality of the story you got the only voice of reason in the entire movie which is played by john hurt uh charlie prince he's like he's a, he's a third member of the crew obviously so he, he's trying to mm-hmm. you know calm things down the best he can but at the same time you can't control wild bill or, or what wild bill is going to do so he's just kind of like <laughs> you know, say la vie, you know, let it happen. You know, it's going to happen anyway. It's just every situation, which I love about John Hurt in this movie, he's a great actor anyway, but he's never shown up in a Walter mm-hmm. Hill film. And again, him and James Gammon are, are welcome additions to this universe, and you wish there was more of them. And, um, but yeah. Yeah. Charlie Prince, Charlie Prince, a made up character, not not an actual person. Oh, okay. So he, he's kind of a, yeah, he's a stand in, like, to, like, just flesh out the themes of the film more than anything else. Like he, he obviously is, he's kind of like the point of view character for, for the audience in a certain degree. And he's kind of like helping guide us along. Here's the themes of the story. Here's what's going yep. on. You Here's know. our faithful narrator. Mm-hmm. Yep. And am I the only one that surprised, even though I know we've all seen this before this particular viewing, but does it surprise anybody that still to this day that he lives through this movie? Cause you don't, you'd think for sure Charlie Prince is going to buy it each and every time I watch this. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I felt like you, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if I would hundred percent agree with that. Um, I feel, I feel like the, the fact that he's a, he's a made up character and he's the narrator kind of just, guarantees he's going to survive uh, yeah, yeah, to the I end right yeah i mean he starts out he's at the we open with the funeral right so it's, it's still better than so fucking he, he's oh, there it's still better than billy the kid doing his own narration and in, in young guns too do, do, doing the old man voice <laughs> come on now oh, <laughs> oh my god uh, i love the son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I know most of this fiction. A lot of, you know, some of this is fiction. I'm sure a lot of the the egging on of 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 J- Jack McCall is is because he's constantly has you know voices in his ear to to get it done. Finally, you know whether it's from Lurleen, Christine Applegate's mm-hmm. character, or from um, Donnie Lonigan, James Remar's character, basically saying you know fucking make it happen. If you're angry, fucking get it done. You know and We'll, we'll take care of you yeah. or what, what not. And say, so, <laughs> I kind of like. Yeah. It, it, so, it, oh, I'm sorry. 
I was just gonna say those those characters also you know all fictional like yeah, the, yeah. you know the the whole thing between behind Jack McCall is totally fictional. Oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they almost represent they almost represent like you know how you have, you have the angel and the devil on your shoulder. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have an angel on his shoulder. He's got three devils on his shoulder, like constantly telling him, you know, kill this motherfucker. <laughs> and and they're all bitches. Quite mm. frankly, they're all bitches that don't want to do the job themselves. Right. It, it, it kind of helps like, in the, in oh, the narrative. James Remar. <laughs> it kind of helps in the in the narrative in the end, you know, to where he has a has a a, a, um, a moment of reason there, like should I do this? Because they have the whole him, him having the actual conversation with Wild Bill about you know his mother and blah 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 blah, blah and it's told pretty well in the flashbacks, in my opinion. But you know, he, he didn't know all that obviously, and but you know he, he does the deed anyway and I, I have mentioned Ellen Barkin yet and I should have a long time ago as Calamity Jane another another voice of reason uh, but reckless herself but mm. she, she wants a little wild bill to highly oh, I'm sorry highly sexed up version of the real Cal- Calamity Jane who looks like the most sec- if you look at photos of her looks like the most rough around the edges sexless school marm you could ever think of from back in the day like here she is like, oh, yeah, yeah, I get, I get why Jeff Bridges just, you know, raw dogs are on a fucking poker table or whatever, you know, <laughs> at one point. And gets cock blocked. Gets mm-hmm. fucking cock blocked. It's, Mid-stroke. It's, you know, what it's, the hell? It's like Carrie. Don't read the, way, the way Carrie is written in, in the Stephen King book is right. noth- it's nothing close to what the movie represents. Any of the movies are represented. It, it's, uh, mm-hmm. you, you, you never get that and whatever. It, it is what it is. But she's great, and it, it's hard it's hard not to make Ellen Barkin a sex spot. I mean, have you seen her today? I, I just watched um that Netflix movie that I prefer. Oh, damn. It's got Pierce Bros and her, Adam, Adam Levine, and I forget who else. Oh, oh Adam, the Adam, Outlaws? Adam, Adam, yeah, The Outlaws, which is very fun. But she's foxy at like 70 years old, so it's kind of hard to say, hey... He really mm-hmm. he ugly he ugly this girl down, please. Like he can't do it. You can't do it. You know. <laughs> oh yeah. And if you uh, do do it, shame on you. <laughs> yeah. I, I you know I I recently was you know while around the same time I watched this I, I wa- rewatched uh, Sea of Love from '89 uh, or whatever with uh, Al Pacino, where you know she she's like physically bigger than Al Pacino, who's a very small man. <laughs> and that's a sex, you know, that's a psychological sort of sex thriller kind of thing. And at one point she forcefully smashes Al Pacino up against the wall and just starts playing with his junk. Nice. And I was like, okay. Uh, I probably haven't seen I, I never since... thought I'd want to see a sex scene with, yeah, I never thought I'd want to see a sex scene with Al Pacino in it, but uh, here we go. I haven't but seen with that. Alan Barkin, you kind of forget that Al Pacino's in it. Yeah, I haven't seen that since probably early '90s cable. So I should, I should go revisit that movie. Oh, so worth a rewatch. Just the buddy cop thing between Al Pacino and John Goodman alone sells that movie. Nice. Michael Rooker popping up in that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gotta check it out. I yeah, it must, must be a fucking first time watch because I haven't seen it in so long. Um, of course, if you want, you want to go further, Alan Barkin. Reunites with Al Pacino in Ocean's Thirteen, which I'm, I have a lot of time for that series too. Just um, it's um, yeah. some some dude bro shit in the, those movies, but it's dude bro shit I can enjoy. <laughs> it's char- it's charming, it's charming shit. Is it, what it is. It you know, is. It's trying to recreate that that Rat Pack feel kind of thing. Yeah, it mostly succeeds, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. But yeah, this is this is great though. As uh, like like Lee said, there's a lot of fictional characters made up for the movie. But it helps move the narrative along pretty well, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I don't know who who you'd replace these characters with, with, with actual people with, but that's a that's a that's a conversation you, for some use. That's or, I'm sorry. That's the thing you you can't right like it's if if you don't have these people to like on the on the actual screen to fill in the gaps a little bit, the movie becomes way more boring because you got to like rely on like the historical records and a lot of those are tenuous at best considering their sources are you know whatever was written or talked about in the old west for the most part which you know not not a not a time where a lot of like great records were necessarily kept about this stuff the especially when it comes to accuracy of gunfighters and shit like that but and you know like this movie sort of 
sort of skirts around it a little bit, but um, throughout this whole movie, you know, Jeff Bridges, people, maybe people don't realize this, you know, uh, uh, while Bill was dying of like syphilis related glaucoma and, and or just syphilis basically, but that that's the reason he's going blind. Like, you know, people know, oh, he was going blind or whatever, but people don't realize he had syphilis. That's why he was dying. Like he, by the time he came to Deadwood, he was already like, gonna die within like a year's time at the very most right right Um, right. like he he, there's a there's a sort of runoff line he talks about where he had a doctor like stick a needle into his pecker at one point or whatever and and to try to cure a a little problem he had a few years back in another town like he's talking about having been injected with like mercury into his genitals which is something they used to do to try to cure syphilis back in the day which usually just ended up giving you other problems (laughs) so yeah Uh, well they know that they know that now yeah 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 yeah. but but uh you know they they just sort of skirt around that a little bit like you know the the real dirty details of what wild bill was going through back in the day (laughs) Like he he was not long for this world, whether he got a bullet in the back of the head or not. So if you're listening to this guy, is you, well, you think I put a, a syringe of mercury in your penis? It might be a bad idea. Just throwing it out there, okay? It's, it's, it's... Yeah, you might not want to try it. Like you TikTokers out there, actually, you know what? You you guys try it. It's, yeah, but <laughs> all the TikTokers should try it. They should try it twice. Yeah, both balls. <laughs> Both yeah. balls. It'll Two be like needles, one one for each nut. It'll be like the gorilla glue girl on on, on the internet. You, you could be just like her, but with mercury <laughs> in your ball sacks. Come on now, you know. <laughs> Remove yourself from the gene pool, please, and thank you. <laughs> oh my god! No, but really, yeah, you do it, folks. Just do just it. Just, mm. just do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I love. I love. You know the 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 which what action set pieces you do get in this movie, which is basically shootouts. The, the, they're they're pretty well staged. I, I love I love the end one where where James Remar and his crew come in and they're gonna clean up just in case uh, Mister Mister McCall can't get it done and they get shot up real good. <laughs> oh um, yeah, yeah. Those are those are those are shot very very well. I mean, I like I like the, I love the whole movie the way it's shot. But uh, interesting fact for from he the never shoot. What? He, he, I'm sorry. It's, it's like he he never shoots bad shootouts, right? Like that's that's one thing Walter Hill always brings to the table. Like we were talking about the Geronimo, uh, Geronimo ones, right? Like that's just more of the same here. And they're you know they're just brief shootouts too, which which I love. You know, it's not a prolonged like 1940s Western shootout where they're ducking and dodging behind shit and all the, that. Like it's a really dirty, nasty fight. Like the fight he has with the soldiers or whatever, where at first he's just like trying to like fist fight him and stuff. And eventually he has to pull his fucking guns or he was going to get beat to death. Or the, yeah. or the one shoot out when he's merely had the guy that was just fucking with his hat, mm-hmm. you know, over in like, you know, 12 seconds, but whew, shot in the yeah. only, only the way that Walter Hill can. Yeah. We'll get those long twenty-minute shootouts in the next movie. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, interesting fact from the IMDb: um, Jeff Bridges, fired Lloyd Bridges, previously played Wild Bill, Bill, Wild, Bill, Wild Bill Hickok, and Wild Bill Hickok, the legend and the man, uh, about thirty years previous. So that's a that's hmm. a nice cap of time there. You know, I, wa- I watched a lot of Sea Hunt as a kid for some reason. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Lloyd Bridges was in <laughs> that. Um, Good stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I have a good time with this movie, and I, I haven't watched it since um, year one of the Cinebeef podcast when we we did a lot of these movies for a one year anniversary. And I forget who was on that show now, but it was um, it was a good time re- re- rediscovering this one for this with you fellas. And man, uh, I gotta say though, it's a it's an efficient movie too. I think this is only about. But like an hour and a half long, like ninety eight minutes. Yeah, I I, f- I feel like it could have been longer. Like I feel like he's, I feel I feel like the biggest problem and why it feels so disjointed at the end, especially, is he's trying to cram too much shit into this. Like I feel like this is one of the times where Walter Hill needed a little bit more time to like let some of this stuff breathe a little bit because when you're flashing back to like the past events that leads him up to Deadwood. Um, they 
they kind of like pop in really briefly and pop out too quickly. I feel like, and uh, I would have liked to see a couple of those things like stretched out a little. Uh, I would have, I would have liked to see more of the um, that shot on video opium trip that he has, basically, yes. which, uh, which is just like, oh, Walter, Walter Hill, what are you doing here? Like, I've never seen you really do anything like this before. This is really cool, um, but he doesn't have enough of that in the film. So, like, honestly, if <laughs> I wish there was like, you know, you know how we're saying like, oh, there's like a like three hour cut of this film that never got released or whatever. Like wh- where's the three hour cut of this fucking film that I feel like that might've been something, but I'd be down for that. I, I, mm. I think he needed to, ex- he'll need to expand more, you know, on the flashbacks and kind of fleshing those out a yeah. little bit more and a little less of, you know, James Remar and his gang being like, come on, Jack, kill him. Come on, Jack, mm-hmm. kill him. Like after a while that goes up, that's where that third act slog comes, comes in. Right. It, it just, it, it's a damn near perfect film, but just it, it it just has some pacing issues in that third act. It's, it's like the worst sin that it commits, but it's mm-hmm. never boring. It just gets to be a tad bit tedious during the yeah. Those and if you and if you appreciate a hangout movie, like this is one of the ultimate like hangout westerns, basically, where it's a lot of the them sitting around talking more than doing anything. And I can get into that. Like, it, it just goes back to, like, Dirty Little Billy or something like that, which is also, like, a great hangout western where it's mostly people sitting in a room talking for the most part. Um, but it works, you know. It, it works on the sort of same level here as, as that. Yeah, totally agree, man. It, it, it's, it, 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 it plays in for 98 minutes. And, you know, like I say, I, I wish it, you, you, James Gann would have been a perfect linchpin for that because he constantly wanted to tell these Wild Bill stories mm-hmm. Now, if you, like, started to tell one, you heard the James Gammon, you know, uh, narration as as he's shit-talking, and you've seen the, 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 the video as it happened, and that great... It, it, I, I love, you know, the wiped black and white, um, you know, video, mm-hmm. the, the video techniques he was using during the flashbacks. If you had James Gammon narrating, you know, just shooting the shit of what, ha- what happened back in the day... Even even if they put bullshit on there, like yeah, he he shot fifty men and like fifty guys lined up for him to shoot or something, you know, it would be really stupid. But you know, I would laugh at it for a while. It would just elevate that that legend, you know, that you would see in like they would see in like these dime store, you know, novelizations of what could have happened with like Billy the Kid or Wild Bill or any of these outlaws, you know, r- real big you know, fictional stories of what, 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 what would happen there. And if I had some of that in the movie, yeah. you know, m- m- more James Gammon, please. You know? <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. If, it, <laughs> honestly, like if, if I had been Walter Hill and I had more screen time to work with, that's kind of where I would go with this film where I'd have more compare and contrast between uh, a flashback showing the legend as told by the people who surround wild bill and, and, puff up you know our hype men for his image and then wild bill actually remembering what happened as you know a counterpoint contextually kind of thing and you know the real thing the real thing is oh wild bill was drunk and he turned around and and shot his fucking deputy and had to leave the town in disgrace like you see that but you 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 don't really get the, the the bigger larger than life story or whatever and if it had more of those kind of things like compacted together in the film um i think i think maybe it would have got more into what hill was trying to do with this where he was trying to like balance the reality versus the myth and and then play with that kind of thing like i I feel like he just he loses it a little bit but i mean at the same time it's still a great film it's still got great actors in it that you can just sit back and watch and you know come out of the film not feeling disappointed at all so he was trying to like you know, balance that bombastic legend of, of this, this of Wild Bill with the, the seriousness of his situation. Like, yeah, I really want to slow it down now because, you know, mm-hmm. by the way, put that mercury in my dick. Make me feel better, you know? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it just, it just. Let me smoke some of that opium. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, the the opium, you know, you call this film Tripping with Wild Bill because he'd be tripping, man. He'd be, he'd be going to the spirit world, <laughs> seeing all kinds of face paints and stuff, and it's, 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 it just it just doesn't balance right. You know, it could have took 
one of the two opium tripping scenes out and maybe gave us a little more of that 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 hyped legend of you know what wild bill is i mean i know um Mm -hmm. in the last one it wasn't a complaint but it's just the time the time it took place we've talked about geronimo you know, it'd been more fun to hear. It would have been fun to hear more about the legend of Geronimo and his ex- exploits before you know he he became associated with the U.S. Army. But that's not what that film was about. I mean, this film was more about yeah the end of his life too. But at the same time, they're they're hyping up this legend, and it would have been more fun to see, especially with their use of the flashbacks, more more of this legend. You know this bombastic legend of Wild Bill, even even if in small little cutscenes, because we, we we like some Walter Hill wipe, mm-hmm. wipe scenes. We we we've learned this from us, okay, people. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, and once again, there was no torchies in this movie. Plenty no. of bars, no torchies. No, uh, I've I've already stated torchies is dead to me. It's fine. It's, uh... <laughs> torchies is dead to me. <laughs> yeah, it is. This is oh. truly last call at Torchies. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> oh my gosh! And if it's... only Wild Bill would listen to you know to old uh, California Joe. Man, he told him not to shoot that Indian. Yeah, but no. Uh, well, I mean, the the Indian was asking for the. He wasn't going to let it go. So at the same oh time. hell no, no, yeah. no. You know, and like it's like Robbie Robertson. This is truly the last waltz until we do it again years later. You know, and mm-hmm. then that's the last waltz. It <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, this is fun, guys. I I, I dig it. Like we um, it's it's wrong. That it's it's not right. I mean, yeah. It's wrong in the ways it's wrong. But you know, it is what it is. I'll, I'll kick it to Cameron. Any final thoughts you'd like to give on this film, sir? Uh, if there's any one of probably two or three movies out of Walter Hill's filmography that I gotta recommend is like as far as uh, deep cuts are concerned, this is one of them. And uh, it's it just as a Western in general, it's a great storytelling. It's got a little bit of that third X log, but I can forgive it for that. It's 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 an imperfection, but it's one I can deal with. It, it's it's never boring. It's got a great cast. Uh, I am missing the Ray Cooter soundtrack. I kind of wish we would have had a little bit of that, although the soundtrack was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Van Dyke Parks, who uh, yeah yeah who you know was like a songwriting partner with uh, Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys. And actually, he actually arranged the uh, uh, song Bare Necessities from the Jungle Book from 67, too. Like, he, he did a lot of work in, like, studio musician stuff and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, an old-time pro in this. But Yeah, yeah. The, like I said, the, the soundtrack is great. The, the cinematography is great in this. It's very mm-hmm. engaging. It's never boring. It's always pleasing to the eye. In a million and one ways, that, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. I give it two thumbs up. I, I love this movie, definitely. Cool, Lee. Yeah, I think I think uh, you know pretty much echo Cameron's thoughts. Uh, I think I pretty much stated everything I I, I thought about this one. Um, it's good. It, it's definitely you know as far as you know some of these uh, later Walter Hill films, people kind of they kind of sleep on them. Because, you know, they most people just kind of like surface level look and see, oh, it was a big financial flop. Like this was a $30 million budget and they only did $2.1 million in box office. So like, yeah, don't let the box office numbers fool you, folks. Yeah, this one's really good. Uh, it is a sleeper hit kind of thing, like it, like Cameron's saying. It's one people overlook and they shouldn't. Um, it's it's trying to do some interesting stuff. It's not 100% successful, but it's Walter Hill taking like chances and trying something a little bit out of his wheelhouse. As much as a Western is in his wheelhouse, he's doing like a revisionist Western and he's trying to play with some things with it that he hadn't done before. And I think just on those things alone, it is an interesting experiment and kind of a success. And also he's just, again, he's pulling an amazing cast of actors you want to see do shit and do shit well. And they do. So, um, it's, it's worth it just for that alone. So, uh, check it out. Yeah. All these things, it's, 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 it's a good time. I mean, I think if they try to go into too, too much of, you know, real historical stuff, I mean, that would be like a 1950s, sixties Western in a way, like traditional Western. You had to be a little more, a little more bombastic in the nineties to, to keep people going. I mean, even, even Unforgiven, you know, was a, 
like a mix of his Yojimbo cowboy with with like his his Rowdy Yates cowboy in a way, but but an old man. But it was still a little more extreme than your average western that they would made way back when. And uh, this pulled it off, mm-hmm. you know, with the shootouts and Jeff Bridges' natural charisma, and in in any role really, and um. A great supporting cast. I guess I wish I wish James Gammon was more of a thing in the Walter Hill universe, but he's he is not, and uh, makes me sad a little bit. You know, it seems like he's just such a gimme of an actor that he would have been in more of his shit. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! But yeah, that's about it for this one. Um, next one you'll hear from us will be another. We're staying in the West again, uh, with uh, mm-hmm. unfortunately they're retired now, Bruce Willis. Um, in Last Man Standing with the great Christopher Walken and I forget who else it's been a long time since I watched that one too so forgive me I know Walken's in it and Bruce Willis is in it Bruce Stern's in that one too Bruce Stern's oh, in yeah. that one too yeah two, 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 two Bruce is no waiting but uh, that's what you'll get next <laughs> is uh, the 1996 Last Man Standing which I just got the laser disc for so I might watch it on there uh, for, for, the, yeah. for that Speak, particular review speaking of you Jimbo yeah, 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 yeah. You're not wrong. I, right. I, I paused there yeah. for some stupid reason. Do not mind me. I, I'm, I'm just stupid like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else. Speaking of you, Jimbo, and then I'm like, wait, wait, but you're going to say something? <laughs> <laughs> it's like rectum. Damn might, have some influ- might, ha- <laughs> <laughs> might have some influence on my uh, choice for uh, Patreon exclusive, too. Oh, okay. Nice, nice, nice. I can tell you yet. No. <laughs> 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 Gotta wait to the actual Patreon episode to find that shit out. Yeah. Speaking of Patreon, if you guys haven't done it yet, go uh, log in or, or give your money to the Legion Patreon, patreon.com slash Legion Podcast, because on the next Patreon episode of this show, you are going to get what is Lee's choice this time around, which is John Wayne, Lauren Bacall, and little older Ronnie Howard. And the shootest. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about that on the next Patreon. And uh could be an interesting conversation. So, if you haven't done that yet, go do that. Get all the goodies that that entails. And um, thank you for your support either way. Yeah, but we prefer your money. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Thoughts and prayers don't go very far. We need dough. We need some dough, Ray, me. Yeah, we got to, we got to, who's running Legion again?